download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. Hey, we're talking about downstrokes here, uh, playing riffs. Got a new program available, a new bundle. Um, and in that, in connection to that, we're talking about how to increase the speed at which you can do these downstroke riffs because that can be really challenging. You know, the... right? That's really a challenge to get up to speed. Um, and in the previous video, we talked about how to actually do it, how to turn that into a practice routine. What part of the heart, hand arm are you going to use? What muscles? And what is really the challenge? In this video, I'm going to give you um, a practice method that you can use to break through uh, to the speed level you want. And by breaking through, I mean telling the brain what it is that you want. Because very often when we practice in the way that I described in the previous video, which is the meat, which is what you want to do to get there, then when you use that practice method, the brain often goes, well, it, with any practice method, it goes, well, we're doing it at this level. Why do we need to, need to develop? Why would I need to go any faster? Well, because I want you to. But you have to tell it in a very physical, very real way that you, you want to go faster. And I'm going to show you a couple of exercises you can do to tell it that so you actually progress faster than you would without it. The, the thing is, anything you do fast is much easier if you have an inlet. Just imagine you have to jump over, over a, a, you know, you have to jump whatever distance and you're standing in one spot and you have to jump like with no inlet. You, you can't run first and then bam, jump. You have to just jump and then jump right back afterwards and then back and forth like that. That will diminish the speed at which, or the length at which you can jump by like 50%, right? Well, if you have an inlet, you can jump like crazy. And the same thing goes here. That if I, if I told you to play 16 downstrokes as fast as you can, that will be 50% of the speed that you could do two downstrokes. So if I tell you to go... That's much easier than going... Right? Much easier. Because it's just the way it is. It's the same thing with alternate picking. If you can mix and blend alternate picking with something else like hammer-ons and pull-offs or sweep picking, uh, then it's much easier to get up to speed. So we want to use that when we practice because then we, we can actually play faster than we're able to. Right? We can jump further than we're able to if we have that inlet. And there are two ways of putting this into action. Um, and when we do that, we tell the brain what we want. We say, okay, this is what we want. This is what we want. This is what I want. This is what I want. You can't pl keep playing at that high level if you kept, you know, then you would have to tense up and do all kinds of weird stuff that wouldn't benefit you in the long run. But we can show the brain what it is that we want. Two ways of applying this. The first one is to go and simply take a physical break. And this is a really good exercise. Just gonna jump, you know, drop the metronome at this point and just go, okay, see, how fast can you play this? Now maybe we want the metronome anyway. You know, how fast can you gaga gaga? And it has to be accurate, right? No, no it's a all right? So you're actually taking a physical break in between. And the process is to do two strokes and then to do three strokes. And you might want to practice with some distortion just to make it fun. Right. Then you want to do three strokes. And You might not be able to do it at this pace here. You want to do two th strokes and then three strokes. If you do one more, you're just playing constantly, right? So. Right. So that, that's the exercise. First you do two strokes and then you can go back and forth between doing two and three. You'll generally play much faster than if you do, right? If you do just constant strokes. 
The second way of, of applying this, the second exercise, is to go normal tempo and then double tempo. So if I have a metronome that says... But that's a little bit too long. So you want to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So because the longer you have to do the fast stuff, the harder it is, right? And you might find yourself at the limit of what you can do when you do this, right? You pick a tempo where you can do it, you can make it happen. And in the, for this exercise, it doesn't matter if you're just on the edge of what is actually possible, that if you, have a, have, if you had to do an extra downstroke at the end of the downstrokes you already do, you would perhaps fail because you're just at that limit. But that's what tells the brain that, hey, dude, we want to be able to do this, right? And you're actually stepping into a zone where you're playing much faster than you would be able to if you had to do it continuously. So the two exercises are, Take an actual break to get an inlet. So ga 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 right? And exercise number two is, you know, play normal tempo, double tempo. I really like the other, the second one here because it allows you to be your own metronome. You can sit in the couch with no sound on and go da. One, two, three, four, ba da 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 da. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And and the slower beat becomes your your metronome, so it really develops your timing as well. And you can do another power chord if you want to. Right, <laughs> whatever you want to do. But keep your focus on this hand when you do that. Don't, you don't want to practice all kinds of stuff down here. You want to focus on this one. You want to focus on staying relaxed and staying in control and muting the strings and getting everything right all the time. And I promise you, if you work with this scientifically like that, use the first method in the first video and then the second here where you go, uh, you take an actual break. So you go da da, da da, da da. Or you go da 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 da. If you'll do that and go back and forth between these two exercises, preferably you'll do it, you know, sitting in the couch watching TV with your friends, family, whatever, in front of YouTube. Just keep and remember the final word here. Remember that this takes thousands of repetitions, and don't let your brain go oh thousands because it takes hundreds of thousands of repetitions, even millions of repetitions. And stop being a, you know, a whiner, right? It's easy. It's not hard. You know, I, I know we want, everybody wants their Christmas presents as soon as possible, right? It's just the way it is. I want my result as fast as possible, Klaus. But this is the shortcut. Right? You can struggle forever with this, right? And use your arm and get, ugh, and ugh. You're never really good. You don't feel confident because you don't focus on the the mechanics of doing this and, and really engaging in those mechanics and working the brain and the body in the most effective, most fast way, you know, where you get to the, your assault in the fastest way possible. What if you could do crazy downstrokes in two months or three months? You know how, t how quickly time passes by if you have the right rituals during the day, during the week, during the month for three months like that and you focus on it, that will be handled like that. If you do the right thing, it's, this is what it is. It's, this is how you build the skills, right? And then you develop some rituals every single day that guarantees that you actually do this. So jump into it, fix your downstroke so you can, you know, go ahead and and play the cool riffs in our new program. <laughs> Click the link below here, go check it out. It's really cool. Um, see you in the next video. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.